Good morning and welcome. Welcome to the service of Emmanuel Lutheran Church on this All Saints Sunday. Our conviction that God has made us all unique and valuable means that we welcome you. We welcome you to bring your whole self with your own perspectives, abilities, ethnicity, gender identity, and sexual orientation and cultural background to this community where all belong and have a purpose. A special welcome to any visitors that we have with us this morning. It is good to have you with us. At Emmanuel Lutheran Church, we are a community through whom God is transforming lives by sharing our faith in God's love and grace. Let us take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. God of blessing, we thank you for the waters of baptism that shower us with your grace, surround us with your love, and fill us with hope in Christ. For the waters that rain upon our, your planet, bringing forth abundant fruit of the earth, we thank you, O Creator. For the waters that nourish your creatures, sustaining life of animals, people, and plants, we thank you, O Spirit. For the waters that reveal your beauty through waterfalls, shorelines, and watercolor paints, we thank you, O Life Giver. For the waters that we play in, the pools, lakes, and sprinklers, we thank you, O Joy Bringer. For the waters that wash clean our sin, grafting us into the body of Christ and giving us new life, we thank you, O oh, merciful one. Just as Jesus taught from the mountaintop, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, who mourn and thirst for righteousness. So too, Jesus proclaims God's favor upon all who feel anxious and broken during these frightening and uncertain times. We pray, O oh Lord, for the people of the world who do not have clean water or whose source of water is threatened. We pray, O oh Lord, for the lands that are suffering on, under the weight of too much water or are parched with thirst due to lack of water. Fill us and your baptized children throughout the world with your spirit that calls and empowers us to steward the waters of the earth for the sake of your saints now and in the generations to come. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Beloved of God, in the body of Christ, we are made one with all saints, past, present, and future. This year, our world has suffered under the weight of global pandemic, violence and brutality, and social division. Throughout the world, we have lost 1.1 million people to COVID-19, 230,000 in the United States, 2,300 in Washington State, 70 in Clark County. Our county has shaken in the wake of the violent deaths of too many neighbors who are black. In our community of faith, we have lost beloved siblings who have shared with us in God's mission to the world. Among our friends and family, loved ones have died of illness, suicide, violence, accident, and more. In faith, we cry out in mourning. In hope, we trust the no that nothing separates God's children from Christ. In love, we continue to live out the legacy of the saints who have gone before us. In this same faith, hope, and love, 
we name aloud and in our hearts those saints in our lives who have passed this year. Grace crying. Renee Dar. John Potter. Dean Adams. Norma Thompson. Sunny Swales. Lisa Doshina. In this same faith, we hope and love. We name in our hearts representatives of those who have passed this year from COVID, violence, and struggle. In this same faith, hope, and love, we name in our hearts those saints who have made us who we are as individuals and as a community. During this moment of silence, you too are invited to light a candle in honor of those who are now one with Christ. from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. You remember our labor and toil, brothers and sisters. We worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you while we proclaimed to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how pure, upright, and blameless our conduct was toward you believers. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father with his children urging and encouraging you and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. Word of God, Word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. The story of the fall of Freddy the leaf. Spring had passed, so had summer. Freddy the leaf had grown large. His midsection was wide and strong, and his five extensions were firm and pointed. 
He had first appeared in spring as a small sprout on a rather large branch near the top of a tall tree. Freddy was surrounded by hundreds of other leaves just like himself, or so it seemed. Soon he discovered that no two leaves are alike, even though they were on the same tree. Alfred was the leaf next to him, Ben was the leaf on his right side, and Claire was the lovely leaf overhead. They had all grown up together. They had learned to dance in the spring breezes, bask lazily in the summer sun, and wash off in the rainy, cooling rains. But it was Daniel who was Freddie's best friend. He was the largest leaf on the limb and seemed to have been there before anyone else. It appeared to Freddie that Daniel was also the wisest among them. He was Daniel who could tell them that they were part of a tree. It was Daniel who explained that they were growing in a public park. It was Daniel who told them that the tree had strong roots which were hidden in the ground below. He explained about the birds who came to sit on their branch and sing morning songs. He explained about the sun, the moon, the stars, and the seasons. Freddie loved being a leaf. He loved his branch, his light leafy friends, his place high in the sky, the wind that jostled him about, the sun rays that warmed him, the moon that covered him with soft white shadows. Summer had been especially nice. The long hot days felt good and the warm nights were peaceful and dreamy. There were many people in the park that summer. They often came and sat under Freddie's tree. Daniel told him that giving shade was part of his purpose. What's a purpose, Freddie asked. A reason for being, Daniel had answered. To make things more pleasant for others is a reason for being. To make shade for old people who come to escape the heat of their homes is a reason for being. To provide a cool place for children to come and play. To fan with our leaves the pin picnickers who came to eat on checkered tablecloths. These are all reasons for being. Freddie especially liked the old people. They sat so quietly on the cool grass and hardly ever moved. They talked in whispers of times past. The children were fun too, even though they sometimes tore holes in the bark of the tree or carved their names into it. Still, it was fun to watch them move so fast and to laugh so much. But Freddie's summer soon passed. It vanished on an October night. He had never felt it so cold. All the leaves shivered with the cold. They were coated with a thin layer of white, which quickly melted and left them dew drenched and sparkling in the morning sun. Again, it was Daniel who explained that they had experienced their first frost, the sign that it was fall and that winter would come soon. Almost at once, the whole tree, in fact, the whole park was transformed into a blaze of color. There was hardly a green leaf left. Alfred had turned a deep yellow. Ben had become a bright orange. Claire had become a blazing red. Daniel a deep purple. And Freddie was red and gold and blue. How beautiful they all looked. Freddie and his friends had made their tree a rainbow. Why did we turn different colors? Freddie asked. When we are on the same tree. Each of us is different. We have had different experiences. We have faced the sun differently. We have cast shade differently. Why should we not have different colors? Daniel said matter-of-factly. Daniel told Freddie that this wonderful season was called fall. One day, a very strange thing happened. The same breezes that in the past had made them dance began to push and pull at their stems, almost as if they were angry. They caused some of the leaves to be torn from their branches and swept up in the wind, tossed about and dropped softly to the ground. All the leaves became frightened. What's happening? They asked each other in whispers. It's what happens in fall, Daniel told them. It's the time for leaves to change their home. Some people call it to die. We all will die, Freddie asked. Yes, Daniel answered. Everything dies, no matter how big or small, how weak or strong. We first do our job. We experience the sun and the moon, the wind and the rain. We learn to dance and to laugh. Then we die. I won't die, said Freddie with determination. Will you, Daniel? Yes, answered Daniel, when it's my time. 
What is that? asked Freddy. No one knows for sure, Daniel responded. Freddy noticed that the other leaves continued to fall. He thought, I must be, it must be their time. He saw that some of the leaves lashed back at the wind before they fell. Others simply let go and dropped quietly. Soon the tree was almost bare. I'm afraid to die, Freddy t told Daniel. I don't know what's down there. We all fear what we don't know, Freddy. It's natural, Daniel reassured him. Yet, you were not afraid when spring became summer. You were not afraid when summer became fall. They were natural changes. Why should you be afraid of the season of death? Does the tree die too, Freddy asked? Someday, but there is something stronger than the tree. It is life. That lasts forever and we are all part of life. Where will we go when we die? No one knows for sure. That's the great mystery. Will we return in the spring? We may not, but life will. Then what has been the reason for all this? Freddie continued to question. Why were we here at all if we only have to fall and die? Daniel answered in his matter-of-fact way. It's been about the sun and the moon. It's been about happy times together. It's been about the shade and the old people and the children. It's been about colors in fall. It's been about seasons. Isn't that enough? That afternoon, in the golden light of dusk, Daniel let go. He fell effortlessly. He seemed to smile peacefully as he fell. Goodbye for now, Freddy, he said. Then, Freddy was alone, the only leaf on his branch. The first snow fell the following morning. It was soft, white, and gentle, but it was bitter cold. There was hardly any sun that day, and the day was very short. Freddy found himself losing his color, becoming brittle. It was constantly cold, and the snow weighed heavily upon them. At dawn, the wind came back came that took Freddy from his branch. It didn't hurt at all. He felt himself float quietly, gently, and softly down. As he fell, he saw the whole tree for the first time. How strong and firm it was. He was sure that it would live for a long time, and he knew that he had been a part of its life, and it made him proud. Freddy landed on a clump of snow, it somehow felt soft and even warm. In this new position, he was more comfortable than he had ever been. He closed his eyes and fell asleep. He did not know that spring would follow winter and that the snow would melt into water. He did not know that what appeared to be his useless dried self would join with the water and serve to make the tree stronger. Most of all, he did not know that there asleep in the tree and the ground were already plants for new leaves in the spring. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the 23rd chapter. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, Therefore, do whatever they teach and follow it, but do not do as they do. For they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and at the, and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth for you have one Father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of our Lord. 
Let us open with a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know that voice that we sometimes have in our head? That voice that says that we are not enough, we're not good enough, we're not strong enough, we're not faithful enough. Sometimes I think back about where that voice started. And sometimes I think about the people that I've met throughout my life who have kind of encouraged that voice in me. And I realize that that is not the voice of God. I think there's something within us that knows that that's a burden that God does not want to place on us. Jesus is talking to the disciples, continuing his back and forth with the leaders of the people. And he calls out once again, the scribes and the Pharisees. And this time he says to them, yes, you are teachers of the law. You are given the authority, the power, the position, the privilege, the responsibility to encourage the people to be faithful to the Torah, the laws of God. And yet, instead of doing what the law is supposed to do, they make the law into a burden by adding one more thing that's required of the people to be good enough for God, to be good enough for the community, to be pure, to fit in. And Jesus says, instead of, of lifting that burden from people, you place that burden upon people. Do you hear that? That message? That the gift of Torah the gift of the law for the people was actually supposed to lift the burden. And for those of us who share this good news with people around us and who listen to it for our own selves, do we actually recognize the freedom that it offers us? The way it offers us the opportunity to be freed of what bogs us down, be freed from that voice within us that says that we're not good enough, be freed from that voice within us that looks out at the world and tries to put into categories who is right, who is wrong, who is good, who is bad, who is in, who is out. That's a burden that God does not require us to carry. And so, beloved children of God, on this All Saints Sunday, this day we recognize and honor and, and celebrate the lives of the saints who have gone before us. Let us remember those who have built us up, who have built up the church, who have built up our community and our nation and our world who have helped us learn how to live into the gospel of Christ, the good news that says, beloved children, you can be free. Who are you thinking about today? Who taught you what Christ has to say about justice, about making space in our lives, in our world, at our tables for everyone, for all? Who taught you that all literally means all? Who taught you that you don't have to earn your grace, your position with God? You don't have to earn God's love because God simply says to you, you are my beloved child with whom I am well pleased and I am using you to make a difference in the world. For whom are you a saint? a teacher of the gospel of Christ, the gospel who says, I love you, 
the gospel who that says go share this love with others the gospel that says work for justice and truth we don't have to be perfect to be god be to be called god's saints indeed in the lutheran church we proclaim that we are simultaneously saint and sinner in our baptism we have been marked we have been marked by the cross of christ sealed by the holy spirit and now we're god sinners we're god's saints yeah we're going to make mistakes but we can come before the waters of baptism even when we wash our face in the morning we can remember our baptism and say like like luther did but i am baptized we can receive god's forgiveness and we can know that god can still use us to be saints for the for the sake of the world around us so beloved children of god let us go forth on this all saints sunday let us give thanks for the saints who have gone before us who have made our lives and our faith what it is today. Let us go forth and say thank you to those who are still living, those saints who continue to teach us about what it means to follow Christ. Now we have the opportunity to hear from a couple of people reflecting on the saints in their lives and in this church. And I invite you to take their reflections and to reflect for yourself. And who are the saints that you're remembering? What are the qualities of Christ that you learned from them? And how can you better live that out in the world and share it with others? Let us share these stories with one another. Amen. I learned uh, a lot of things from my parents, Marvin and Mary Johnson. This is a picture of them close to their wedding day. My father was very active at um, St. Paul's Lutheran Church. I remember that after he had uh, surgery for a brain tumor, um, this is uh, when he was older, there were uh, several men that came from the church to give him an award because he had been so active in four different uh, areas of the church. Two of them I remember. One, I'm sure he was on the council, and he always sang in the choir. He had a beautiful voice. My mother was uh, with the Apostolic Lutheran Church, and so they, they got along just fine. Um, my father also was on the committee to um, the Synod Committee, to look for property for the first Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary, which they bought an old uh, estate in Spanish style buildings in Berkeley, California, way up on the top of Marin Drive, I believe it was called. It was a terrible trip getting up there, but a beautiful site. Mom was always active with us in school. She helped with PTA. She helped with, uh, we had little Christmas programs and things like that. They weren't perfect. Uh, none of us are, but they were very loving and welcome uh, family, and I'm thankful for them. This is my mom, June Reek. She was marked by an extraordinary selflessness, an ability to listen to others and to feel joy for others, and to listen and to feel joy about anything I said or did, really. She was an example of faith and forgiveness and embodied pure unconditional love. She taught me to stand up in the face of adversity and to beat the odds when the cards were stacked against me, like she did living with bone cancer from breast cancer for 21 years. But most importantly, she taught me, she taught all of us in the family to love, not just me, but every person touched by her on earth was brightened by her pure goodness. What an amazing blessing to have a mom like that. Love is what matters and she taught us to love. Beulah Stabno was an inspiration to me by her leadership with the Sunday School even after her children had grown and moved on with their lives. She was outstanding when it came to costumes for any event. She had a fantastic memory, an artistic gift that she continued to use 
through the years by working with me on the church newsletter, and she designed many of the banners we still have and use at Emmanuel. She always reminded us that we are God's hands and feet to do his work in the world. Gordon Young and I connected, first as golfers with electric golf bag carriers, comparing problems with wheels and batteries, and later as woodworkers, he teaching, me learning. I could make a mud pie, but Gordon could make a brick. We clicked on many projects. His energy, his insight, and his commitment to service to others was very contagious. I, of course, appreciated his efforts on my behalf, but I also began to realize all he had done for Emmanuel over the decades. He quietly made contributions of such magnitude that I still look around and am humbled. Our love of golf was shared, but not nearly often enough on the course, and I hope he continues to be of service above, as he taught me to be. Thank you, Gordon. Don't
Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for prophets and teachers whose witness to your gospel across time and space inspire us by their courage to share our faith in your love and grace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Unite this nation for the good of all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us to your call to serve all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit especially those on our prayer list. Linda, Betty, Diane, Kaja, Ken, and Val, Ed, Lori, Corpo, Randy, Denny, McKenna. For our national elections, for all those impacted by COVID and for the lives lost, for those experiencing homelessness as we move into winter, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the spirit of the early church to practice hospitality, share generously, and proclaim your gospel of grace. Bless the mission and ministry of our ELCA denomination, Southwest Washington Synod, Fort Vancouver Conference Congregations, and Emmanuel Lutheran Community. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every time, Countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Holy are you, O Lord and great is your majesty. All the saints in heaven and on earth sing their praise of your eternal glory. For in the beginning, you prepared the worlds by your holy word, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. You laid out your holy plan of creation and redemption, that all who might know you would have faith, not in things seen, but in things not seen. By faith, Noah and his family built the ark and were saved from the flood to bring forth a new generation. By faith, Enoch of old was taken straight into heaven. By faith, Abraham and Sarah obeyed your calling and went forth from their home to a place promised but not seen, to a family promised but only later fulfilled. By faith, Moses brought forth your chosen people, the Israelites, 
from slavery into freedom and led them to your holy mountain to worship and to receive your law. By faith, the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah held fast to your promise of a Messiah who would come to save your people. By faith, Mary and Joseph awaited the day of your promise until you brought forth the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son. In him is the fulfillment of their faith and hope of all the saints. In him is our salvation won and your love revealed. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. In heaven and on earth, O oh God, the saints and angels unite around your holy altar to proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We remember and hold fast to Christ's examples of faith and life as the saints before us have done. We remember his living among outcasts and sinners, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again to raise us and all the faithful departed to live together eternally in fellowship with him in his heavenly kingdom. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the body and blood of him who is the hope and salvation of the living and the dead. Send your Holy Spirit upon us also, that we might know his presence in these gifts, and that through them we may be united in prayer and praise with all those who have gone before us. With this feast, join us in one holy communion of saints, one great cloud of witnesses, with St. Peter and St. Paul, with St. John and St. Mary Magdalene, and with all the blessed dead whose lives of faith in unseen things continue to inspire us, as together we lift our voices to you, O God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, in eternal glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We are bold this morning to pray that risky prayer that Christ first taught us. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved children of God, you are invited to set your own altar table at home to commune with us even from a distance. We recognize that ideally we would be gathered together in body, but we also know that we are gathered together in the spirit. And so if you feel comfortable, you may set your altar and join us for communion. Receiving the bread of life, this is the body of Christ given for you. Receiving the cup of grace, this is the blood of Christ given.
restore you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Beloved children of God, receive God's blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, a few announcements for the good of the order. First of all, a uh, thank you to everyone who sent in remembrances and pictures in honor of All Saints Day today. Also this week, we are very aware that we have a national election on Tuesday. So we encourage everyone to vote and to encourage those you know to vote. It is part of our responsibility and our privilege as citizens of the United States. And we also ask that every person pray for the election, that it be safe, that it move toward justice, that all voices are heard and votes are counted. Also, we are moving today into the month of November, uh, the month of Thanksgiving, as I like to call it. And you are encouraged to every day write one thank you note to someone. You can do this for family members and friends, but we'd also like to encourage our faith community to write one thank you note a day to a, a person of the congregation a member, a participant, it doesn't matter. Someone you know well, someone you don't know very well. But think hard about how you've seen God working in that person and building up the community of faith in that person. And, and please write a thank you note every day. There are several online opportunities this week, including a Monday book study at 12.30 p.m., we are between books, but we will be gathering nonetheless to have conversation. Tuesday care team meeting at 10 a.m. And Tuesday Bible study in the evening is canceled. Thursday women of Emmanuel will be meeting at 9.30 a.m. If you don't have a gather magazine, please contact the office and we'll get you the Bible study. On Saturday, we have the opportunity to have a virtual event with Red Sweater Project, our partner in Tanzania who at the Mangere School. We are going to be able to talk with the teachers all the way in Tanzania and hear updates about how things are going at our partner school. That is going to be this Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, please register with the link that we will send out in the weekly news. Thank you for joining us today and God's blessings to you uh, today and into the month of November. <laughs>